Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. In my last video on DaVinci Resolve, I had mentioned that I had all kinds of problems getting uh, video file formats to work with Resolve. And I wanted to go ahead and demonstrate that for you, and then show you what I did to fix it. Hopefully this will save you a whole bunch of time and pain later on. Uh, my video camera, which is a Sony Handycam, records in a file format called AVC HD. This file format produces a video that, you know, has a, a sequential numbering system. That's just what the camera does, but the uh, file extension is .mts. Let me go ahead and grab one here and play it for you. And you don't uh, hear any sound. And you can you can definitely see my lips moving, and you don't see any audio in the UV meters here in the audio tab. And that effectively was my biggest problem. After a whole bunch of Googling, I found out that the audio format that my video camera produces is compressed. And... DaVinci Resolve has a hard time dealing with uh, compressed audio because, as I mentioned previously, the pedigree of DaVinci Resolve is that it was specifically designed to work with a professional video uh, shot on professional cameras for big screen movies, and that's not what we're dealing with. A bunch of Googling later, I found out that there is a very nifty program called FFMPEG. This is their website. This program allows you to convert uh, audio and, I guess, video as well. The website is ffmpeg.org. And uh, for as nice as this program is, its biggest downfall is that it has no graphical user interface. It has a command prompt type interface, and it's actually a little tricky to install. Let me show you. Uh, first, we want to obviously download FFMPEG, which is kind of tricky to begin with. First, you hit download, which takes you to their downloads page, but ignore this big green button here, and you want to come down here and grab the Windows package and go ahead and click on Windows Builds, which takes you over to another uh, website here. We're going to grab the nightly build for uh, FFMPEG. We want to grab the 64-bit and the static, and then go ahead and download it. And this will get downloaded into my Downloads folder. It's not the biggest program, 45 megabytes, but it's also not the smallest program, so it takes a... Uh, hot minute to download and it'll be done here in just a second there we go now that it's downloaded we can go ahead and open it up which I use is arc you can use whatever uh, zip uh, software that you want and we want to go ahead and extract it and we want to put it in out into our root directory oh, I missed it didn't I computer C drive like that OK, and extract. Of course. Oh my goodness, close, close. Sorry about that. Instead, we can go to Downloads, and we can copy this to the root directory. This is annoying uh, Windows stuff. Go ahead and paste it in here give it permission like that and now we should be able to extract it in this directory like that <clears throat> and you'll see a new uh, folder appear on here this is it but it's a folder within the folder so we want to grab this guy and go cut and paste like that, and I think that actually overwrites this folder. So now we have bin, doc, license, and presents. These are the files that we're looking for, particularly bin. Because if we look inside bin here, ffmpeg.exe is right here. Now, 
now that we have this copied into our C drive, we want to change the file path name to something a little nicer and just FFMPEG <clears throat> sounds good. Oops, I guess I already had a previous installation of it here. And let me go ahead and delete that. And we'll use our current one. Sorry about that. Didn't prep ahead enough. There we go. So FFMPEG like that. Let me show you how this uh, pertains to command prompt. So if I go here and go CMD, this is our command prompt. And if I try to run FFMPEG from my user directory, so if I type just outright type FFMPEG, G, it doesn't recognize the file path. But now if I na oops, navigate to, uh, to the C drive, let's CD like that, um, CD space uh, FFMPEG, like that, cd space bin, that's where the executable is located. And now I can type in ffmpeg, and you can see that the program runs. Now we can change, uh, we can do this little trick as it may, <clears throat> to make ffmpeg easier to run. First we want to go to the control panel, we want to go to system. We want to go to the advanced system settings and we want to go down here to environment variables and what we're looking for is path. If path is not listed in your you know, little list of uh, environmental variables, you can always hit new and create a new one. But in our case it exists so we can hit edit. When we hit edit, go ahead and uh, under variable value scroll all the way over to the right and we want to go semicolon FFMP. Oh, oops, semicolon uh, C colon backslash F F M P E G backslash bin backslash. And now we can hit OK, OK, OK. Now let me open up a new command prompt. D like that. And again, we're back to this folder, and I showed you previously that running FFMPEG from this folder didn't do anything. So let me do that again, FFMPEG, like that, and you can see that it runs. What that extension that we put into the path of the envir environmental variables did is that this allows us to execute FFMPEG from anywhere on the computer. Now that we went ahead and quote unquote installed FFMPEG, we can go ahead and jump over to this folder here and let me show you the batch file. After Googling a bunch, I found the command that I can execute to run FFMPEG, and I'm going to skip that because this makes it so much easier. And with that command, you have to put in a, a specific file that you want to convert and then you have to put in the file name that you want it to end up as and you have to do this for each individual file and as you can see there's quite a bit of files in here there's you know well oh you know close to 40 files and so i wrote a batch file which allows me to do the conversion quickly let me show you what's inside the batch file you can right click on the batch file and hit edit. Looking inside the batch file, we have three lines. It's a very simple batch file. The first line checks to see if a folder called new files exists. So if not exists, the folder new files, go ahead MD, make directory, a folder called new files. And when I run this uh, batch file, you'll actually see a folder appear called new files. Then we run a for loop. This for loop will take every star.mts file and convert it by executing this ffmpeg command. 
the way this works is kind of confusing as compared to for loops that we're commonly used to seeing. Normally you see something along the lines of 4x equals 1, the semicolon, actually I guess there's there are parentheses around it, uh, 27 uh, semicolon x plus plus like that. That's a pretty common, like a C, C++ uh, call. What this call defines is, first of all, it defines a for loop variable, which in this case is x, but in the case of up here, it's a percent sign, percent sign a. Confusing. Then it defines the variable space. In this case, it's 1 to 27. And that variable space is defined right here. So this variable space means that every single file with the extension .mts is going to be affected. And then finally, do go ahead and perform, you know, you would have the action underneath here, this command. And this command takes the, uh, the variable and executes this ffmpeg command on it, go ahead and places it in the new files directory and calls it uh, its original file name, but instead of the .mts extension, it'll put on the .mov extension. And then finally, it pauses the output here. Let's uh, go ahead and run this. And what, actually, before even we get started, I want to show you how easy it is to create a batch file. All you have to do is take all this stuff, copy it, we don't want to save. You can create a, a new uh, text document like that. Let's just leave it that name. Go ahead and pop it open. Copy our uh, stuff inside. Yes, we want to save it. And then all you do is you change the .txt extension to .bat like that. And you want to confirm the change, and there we go, we made a new batch file. So it's really that uh, simple. You want to go ahead and delete that one. Now that we've uh, created the batch file, let's go ahead and run it. When, as soon as I double click on this, a new directory will appear called uh, New Files. And then uh, we'll actually, I'll let it run in real time. And you can see that even though it's processing uh, close to 40 files, it actually does so uh, quite speedy, speedily. And there you go, let me move this out of the way. You can see the new files directory has appeared. And now FFMPEG is going through and uncompressing the audio in our particular files. It doesn't look very, very sexy, but in the amount of speed that it does this, I, I find it incredible. The Some of the other programs I had tried for effectively transcoding uh, the .mts files into something else were really slow, laborious to use, etc. With this, all you do is you run the batch file, and all of the files get dumped into the new files directory and I think we're just about done here I want to say I think uh, I don't know 30 to 45 seconds is what all of these take roughly Maybe it's not quite as speedy as I was hoping, but like I said, I'm going to let this run in effectively real time to show you, you know, exactly how long it takes. We're almost there, I think. I guess it takes about a minute. There we go, and we're all done. See, that didn't take any time at all. 
And the very last thing is the pause and you press any key to continue and the program exits. Now that the program is complete, if we look in the new folder files, we have all of the files that we had before and they have the .mov extension instead of the .mts extension. And if we go ahead and jump back over to DaVinci Resolve, we can grab this new files folder and we can go ahead and play it. And you can see the UV meters here. Hi, and welcome to the electronics. And, and you can hear me talk. It's, I don't want to say it's really that simple because it took me days and days and days to put all of that together. The, the batch file, the how to install FFMPEG, etc. Uh, but all in all, now that I have the framework set up, it's fairly painless to go ahead and export my videos to the .moe, .mov file format. As always, thank you for watching. If you have any comments or questions, you're always welcome to leave them down below. And I hope this saves you uh, the pain and suffering that it took me, let's say, it, it was probably closer to a week, a week to get everything set up.